Okay, good Tuesday evening, everybody. David Paul with you here in the KHOU 11 Weather Center with your Tuesday evening tropical update. And there is a lot going on out there, even though for the moment there are no actively named systems. We've got two invests and likely a third about to be named an invest in the Caribbean. Three of these spots we're monitoring out there. And the overall picture in the uh, tropical Atlantic is about to become a little more favorable for development for a couple of reasons. One, the MJO, the Madden Julian Oscillation. This is a global wave, a global weather pattern that can cause lifting in certain areas or sinking air in certain areas. Well, it's moving in our direction. It's going to create, we think, a little bit more lift over the Atlantic basin in general over the coming days and weeks. And then the dust that's out there over the Atlantic, there's still some dust, but it's beginning to thin. And that should be another ingredient that encourages more tropical development. Also, just climatologically, we're moving into the heart of the Atlantic hurricane season. Statistically, it peaks right around September 10th, September 11th. So here's what's out here this evening. Three spots that we're watching. We've got this spot, Invest 97L, that's got a good chance, a 70% chance for developing into a named system as we head over the next five days. This spot south of the Cape Verde Islands, 30% chance for development next five days, 60% chance for development in this one in the Caribbean. This is the one that really has our attention. And that is because the two spots in the open Atlantic, I think are most likely to be picked up and scooped out and brushed off to sea by the upper level wind pattern. And we've got one trough, that one's taking Henri with it. Another trough or dip in the jet, this is the wind flow up at 34,000 feet, is likely to dig deep enough into the Atlantic Basin to grab whatever tries to form out here and lift it north and steer it north and east. And if that trough doesn't get what's developing out there, uh, 97 and 98, this next trough coming in as we begin September, is going to be a sharp trough that digs across the east coast and this should just act like a blocker in football and just block whatever tries to form out here over the Atlantic and scoop it up and send it out into the North Atlantic and, and bring it to an icy end. And so that's the overall pattern over the next week or so for the Atlantic part, the heart of the Atlantic Ocean. Further south, we think those systems may be able to duck underneath those troughs. And this is why you see the spaghetti plots on 97L and 98L as you do moving northwest, curly queuing, and then woof, picked up by that trough. Same thing here, generally curving north and then accelerating toward the Azores as it's picked up by that trough. So I think those two are fish storms. The one in the Caribbean is a problem because it is cutting underneath the influence of those approaching troughs. And this one is moving west and looks more and more likely now to develop into our next name system. Ida is the next name on the list. This one has a 60% chance for developing over the next five days. Right now, it's just a cluster of disorganized thunderstorms. That being said, this cluster of storms has stayed together for the past two or three days. It's a tropical disturbance. Clusters of thunderstorms that develop over the tropical Atlantic that hold together for a day or two, we classify as disturbances. If they can stay together, it becomes more likely, more likely that low pressure can begin to form underneath them at the surface. And that, of course, can begin to tap into the energy of the warm ocean water and become a depression or a tropical storm. And that is what is forecast to happen. Now, at the moment, they're not running spaghetti models on this system. It's not an invest yet. I think that's likely to happen in the next 24 hours. So we're leaning heavily on guidance from our two friends, the GFS, the American model, and the European model. So let's begin with the American model, the GFS, which by this coming Saturday tries to develop a low pressure area north of Nicaragua, far northwest Caribbean Sea, just east of Belize. And then on Saturday night, Sunday crosses the Yucatan into the Gulf. The American model has a strengthening tropical system developing off the southern middle Texas coast as we head into Monday afternoon. Now, this type of an outcome would put strong winds toward Corpus Christi, Matagorda Bay to Brownsville. But up in Houston, Galveston, this type of a scenario would bring in a tremendous amount of tropical moisture. You'd be on the dirty side, the wet side of the storm to the north of the center in this scenario and that would create a flash flooding threat going into Sunday and Monday for the entire Texas coastline and maybe even the Louisiana coastline as well. That's the American model. Let's take a look at the European model. It also forms low pressure in the Caribbean, brings it into the Gulf, but this scenario is much more to the north and east. It puts a developing low pressure area south of Vermilion Bay with the heaviest wind and rain, 
again on the dirty side, which in this case will be to the east of the center, to the right hand side to motion, putting New Orleans and Slidell in a threat for flash flooding if this were to be the eventual outcome. Houston and Galveston, you'd get scattered showers, you'd get a north breeze, but not nearly the rain threat. That would be all from the center to the east over toward Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama, and even the Florida Panhandle could see a flash flooding threat from a storm system making landfall near the central Louisiana coast. So that's the European model. So it's a big spread. There's a large degree of uncertainty right now. Here's the way things play out. What we know is we've got a wave developing in the Caribbean. It's likely to move into the Gulf this weekend, and we've got increasing rain chances along the western and central Gulf Coast. That's just the basics. It's too early to really sharpen the pencil on how strong this system could become, the exact forecast track, or where the heaviest rain will fall. There's just too much spread in the eventual outcome. We're just gonna have to wait a couple of more days for the system to actually form and then get better model initiation off of that. The big player in where it eventually goes will be the steering currents at 500 millibars. 500 millibar winds from the European model. Now, they've got a big dome of high pressure sitting over the middle part of the country. This mountain of air is what blocked storms like Grace to the south across the southern Gulf and into Mexico. They wouldn't allow them to move north because this is literally a mountain of air and storms just can't climb the mountain. They get pushed south and around that mountain of air. But that is going to change. That high pressure dome is forecast to split. And as it does so, it's going to create a weakness in between the two main lobes of that high pressure area. That's why the models are turning what tries to form here to the north. But to exactly what degree it moves north, whether it's further west or further east, is yet to be determined. This is just the big picture play as we see it right now. Again, too early to fine tune this forecast, but over the coming days, we should be able to get a better handle on it, especially once we get a low level center forming on whatever is trying to form down there. Big picture though, this is gonna bring a ton of moisture in. Here comes the tropical slug of moisture, which whatever comes out of the Caribbean and the Southern Gulf, and that slug of moisture is gonna create a flash flooding threat. There's just so much tropical moisture. You're looking at P-watts, precipitable water. This is a, a representation of how much moisture is in the vertical column of the atmosphere. And if you were to rain it all out at once, that would equal about two to two and a half inches of rain. It just basically means you've got a tremendously saturated tropical atmosphere and any rain or thunderstorms, any convection that gets going, will have the potential to put down rainfall rates that could cause flash flooding. So this is gonna bring in a lot of moisture regardless of its eventual track. Okay, so a lot of moving parts in that forecast. We're really gonna have to give this another day or two to be able to fine tune that forecast. Stay with us, stay close to the forecast as we head through the several uh, next days and into the weekend. Questions or comments, hit me up on social media. Until next time, we'll see you later.